I'm spinning out. I'm so busy, no one likes me. My mind feels pulled between my life here and my upcoming move. How am I supposed to make art when my head is just all over the place like this? Dude, make art about what's on your mind. I don't have anything artistic on my mind. I have to pack, my friends just move, and I miss them. But I'm also thinking about going to the people I grew up with, but then I'm missing my friends in my home here right now. I've been bouncing through years of different homes and communities. It all seems like so much and also so deadening at the same time. Like you care so much, you don't feel anything at all, or you feel too much all at once. Yeah, so make art about that. I should get up. Hello, and welcome to the Robin Sealer channel. Today, I want to tell a story about making art about what's on your mind. And then I want to talk about what's on mine. I will be doing a reading and time-lapse footage of a painting that I made this week. If you would like to, subscribe, like this video, and check out my socials and links to pre-order my book, Oil Painting Every Day, in the description. Thank you. I believe I've shared parts of this story before, but for the context of this video, I wanted to share it again. This story takes place in 2013 when I was attending university as an art student in Utah. This visual arts program coordinated regular visiting artist lectures that could be attended by anyone interested or students for class credit. It was not my regular role, but on this day, I was substituting for another student who would take visiting artists around the student studio spaces for scheduled critiques. The presenting artist was named Royal Nebuchadnezzar, and during the time I spent with him, one thing he said stood out to me for years. Briefly, I wanted to mention that while writing the script, I actually found out he passed away a year after I met him following a long battle with cancer, so I'm sending my best to his memory today. Royal encouraged that artists should make work about whatever is most pressing on their minds. At the time he stated this, I was undergoing a shift in my painting direction. I had been painting realistic portraits with funky color expression but was preparing for my final solo senior show and was beginning to explore new ideas and a new body of work. I used Royal's advice to sink into the transition. Coming back to school from break earlier that year, I felt different stepping into my studio. Over break, my dad had died unexpectedly and upon returning to painting, I no longer felt motivated to paint color-filled portraits. I began painting more reflective and somber images with some figure but primarily landscape and water subjects. When Royal said to make work about what was most pressing on your mind, what was on my mind was lost and I spent the next fast months painting it. My show is called Tides, water was the dominant visual theme, and the work became my way of reflecting on the coming and going of life. In years after this moment, I have called back the advice Royal gave. During my time student teaching, I had high school students cut and sew small journals in which they had to answer self-reflective prompts. One question I liked to ask them was, what do you think about when your mind wanders? Some people know and others don't initially know their answer to this question. In college, I used to reflect to the question periodically to check myself, where would I go in an absent moment? When I remembered to ask, I would write down my answer or make a mental note of it. A follow-up line of questions I pose students after asking, what do you think about when your mind wanders is, is there a common theme, question, concept, or hope in your recurring thoughts? How can you translate or channel those recurring thoughts artistically? And how can returning interests or thoughts inspire creative work you do? When Royal talked about artists making art that is pressing on their mind, it made me think about how individual artists develop their style and body of work. To sustain a lifetime of generating creative ideas, it's useful to be in tune 
with yourself, able to ground and to source your own thoughts and feelings. In times when you are overrun with thoughts that don't feel artistic, reflecting on your feelings becomes a teaching moment. Emotions are a guide to show us what matters to us, what we want, what we worry about. These things do not need to be separate from or hindering of our creative work. Things that preoccupy our mind or keep us circling in thought can be recognized, worked with, and harnessed to inspire and motivate us creatively. When making, an artist considers their individual interests as well as the interests of their audience. It's easy to get lost on one of those pursuits, burning out or disconnecting by focusing too much on what others want, or getting lost in your own interests. Walking a middle path asks artists to remember their craft, audience connection, and unique combination of thoughts and interests. No two creative persons are the same. We can look to each other for inspiration, example, and ideas on how to excel in our creative paths. But what we uniquely pursue and develop is sacred, worthy of respect, devotion, and dedication. By learning to observe ourselves through different periods of life, we increase our ability to bring the important, engulfing, entertaining, and personally connecting to our endeavors. I am about to move so very soon to when this video releases. My mind has been preoccupied with practical stressors, uh, arranging logistics, selling and packing belongings. There's physical considerations, but the emotional side of change has swollen up uncomfortably a few times in these preparation weeks. I had a couple low days when I started musing over the topics for this video. I've been gearing up for change for a while, excited to see what body of artistic work that I would step into when I finished writing my oil book, but growing increasingly frazzled as my decision to move solidified. In a spiraling moment, I called my mom to try talking out what could be weighing on me and hear her chat for my own comfort. She talked about my nephew asking her for stories about our grandpa and excitedly mused over personal writing she's worked on over the last few years to record and tell some family stories. I didn't feel immediately better talking, but when she spoke, she was so positive and affirmed the importance of family, the stories we tell, and how much these things matter. Mulling over things she said, the idea of family stuck in my mind. I thought about my choice to move closer to family now and all the family I've made living across the country for almost 12 years. In those years, I've witnessed more of the ebb and flow of relationships, the recurrent or rhythmic pattern of coming and going or decline in growth. You see connections change from aging, death, divorce, and through changes, you can come to see how much family you meet through a lifetime. Beyond those we share a household or ancestry with, we find chosen family, friends, partners, and community. Even as some of those relationships ebb and flow, years give you perspective to appreciate formative relationships at different stages of life. At this point, I've known my closest childhood friend for longer than I knew my dad before he passed. In our years of friendship, her and I have lived in various different states, gone to different schools, had other close and meaningful relationships with significant people neither of us got to meet. Through those years, we've remained very close, meeting in various stages of life after breaks apart and returning to that connection. In my artist statement for my show, Tides, I wrote, the recession of the tide suggests a subtractive process, but no water is ever truly lost in the event. In this cycle, there is a metaphorical resurrection. Water can be deep and threatening, mysterious and dark, or calm and healing. Death has similar properties. In that show, I was thinking about loss and the symbolic ties between death and water, but this same artist statement can be used to consider life as well as death. Read differently, I can say, 
Water can be deep and threatening, mysterious and dark, or calm and healing. Life has similar properties. As I step into this move, I hope to keep in touch with myself, able to reflect on guiding thoughts and emotions as a way to make artistic work and life choices that are genuine to what I care about. Let this chat be a reminder to not just get lost in the stress of getting done, but to remember the important motives behind the movements that you make. By connecting with Royal's encouragement that artists make work about what is most pressing on their mind, I hope we can be more in tune with making personally relevant work that can reach others and help us see ourselves more fully. This painting is available with other sale items on robinsealark.com. Help me move, clear out room in my car by buying something. Uh, after this little wonky upload schedule while I drive across country, I'm back to regular uploads. So subscribe. Make sure you like this video and follow me at Robin Selark on my socials to stay looped into content. Peep the description links if you haven't already to pre-order my book, Oil Painting Every Day, and I will see you next time. Bye.